This tutorial covers airport operations. Each time a pilot operates an aircraft, the flight normally begins and ends at an airport. An airport may be a small sod field or a large complex utilized by air carriers. This chapter examines airport operations, identifies features of an airport complex, and provides information on operating on or in the vicinity of an airport. Types of airports. There are two types of airports, towered and non-towered. These types can be further subdivided to civil airports, airports that are open to the general public, military federal government airports, airports operated by the military, National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, or other agents of the federal government, private airports, airports designated for private or restricted use only, not open to the general public. A towered airport has an operating control tower. Air Traffic Control, ATC, is responsible for providing the safe, orderly, and expeditious flow of air traffic at airports where the type of operations and or volume of traffic requires such a service. Non-Towered Airport A non-towered airport does not have an operating control tower. Two-way radio communications are not required, although it is a good operating practice for pilots to transmit their intentions on the specified frequency for the benefit of other traffic in the area. The key to communicating at an airport without an operating control tower is selection of the correct common frequency. The acronym CTAF, which stands for Common Traffic Advisory Frequency, is synonymous with this program. A CTAF is a frequency designated for the purpose of carrying out airport advisory practices while operating to or from an airport without an operating control tower. The CTAF may be a Universal Integrated Community, Unicom, Multicom, Flight Service Station, FSS, or Tower Frequency and is identified in appropriate aeronautical publications. Unicom is a non-government air-ground radio communication station which may provide airport information at public use airports where there is no tower or FSS. This figure lists recommended communication procedures. More information on radio communications is discussed later in this tutorial. Sources for airport data. When a pilot flies into a different airport, it is important to review the current data for that airport. This data provides the pilot with information such as communication frequencies, services available, closed runways, or airport construction. Three common sources of information are aeronautical charts, airport facility directory, AFD, and notices to airmen, NOTAMs. The AFD provides the most comprehensive information on a given airport. It contains information on airports, heliports, and seaplane bases that are open to the public. The AFD is published in seven books, which are organized by regions and are revised every 56 days. The AFD is also available digitally at www.naco.faa.gov. This figure contains an excerpt from a directory for a complete listing of information provided in an AFD and how the information may be decoded, refer to the directory legend sample located in the front of each AFD. Notices to Airmen, NOTAMs. NOTAMs provide the most current information available. They provide time-critical information on airports and changes that affect the national airspace system and are of concern to IFR operations. Prior to any flight, pilots should check for any NOTAMs that could affect their intended flight. Radio communications. Operating in and out of a towered airport, as well as in a good portion of the airspace system, requires that an aircraft have two-way radio communication capability. For this reason, a pilot should be knowledgeable of radio station license requirements and radio communications equipment and procedures. Using proper radio phraseology and procedures contribute to a pilot's ability to operate safely and efficiently in the airspace system. A review of the Pilot Controller Glossary contained in the AIM 
assists a pilot in the use and understanding of standard terminology. The AIM also contains many examples of radio communications. ICAO has adopted a phonetic alphabet, which should be used in radio communications. When communicating with ATC, pilots should use this alphabet to identify their aircraft. An aeronautical chart is the roadmap for a pilot flying under VFR. The chart provides information which allows pilots to track their position and provides available information which enhances safety. The three aeronautical charts used by VFR pilots are sectional, VFR terminal area, and world aeronautical. Sectional charts are the most common charts used by pilots today. The charts have a scale of 1 to 500,000, 1 inch equals 6.86 .6 nautical miles in M, or approximately 8 statute miles SM, which allows for more detailed information to be included on the chart. The charts provide an abundance of information, including airport data, navigational aids, airspace, and topography. This figure is an excerpt from the legend of a sectional chart. By referring to the chart legend, a pilot can interpret most of the information on the chart. A pilot should also check the chart for other legend information, which includes air traffic control frequencies and information on airspace. These charts are revised semi-annually, except for some areas outside the conterminous United States, where they are revised annually. Latitude and Longitude The equator is an imaginary circle equidistant from the poles of the Earth. Circles parallel to the equator, lines running east and west, are parallels of latitude. They are used to measure degrees of latitude north or south of the equator. The angular distance from the equator to the pole is one-fourth of a circle, or 90 degrees. The 48 conterminous states of the United States are located between 25 degrees and 49 degrees north latitude. The arrows in this figure labeled latitude point to lines of latitude. Meridians of longitude are drawn from the North Pole to the South Pole and are at right angles to the equator. The prime meridian, which passes through Greenwich, England, is used as the zero line from which measurements are made in degrees east and west to 180 degrees. The 48 conterminous states of the United States are between 67 degrees and 125 degrees west longitude. The arrows in this figure labeled longitude point to lines of longitude. Any specific geographical point can be located by reference to its longitude and latitude. Washington, D.C., for example, is approximately 39 degrees north latitude, 77 degrees west longitude. Variation Variation is the angle between true north and magnetic north. It is expressed as east variation or west variation, depending on whether magnetic north is to the east or west of true north. The north magnetic pole is located close to 71 degrees north latitude, 96 degrees west longitude, and is about 1,300 miles from the geographic or true north pole, as indicated in this figure. If the Earth were uniformly magnetized, the compass needle would point toward the magnetic north, in which case the variation between true north, as shown by the geographical meridians, and magnetic north, as shown by the magnetic meridians, could be measured at any intersection of the meridians. Actually, the Earth is not uniformly magnetized. In the United States, the needle usually points in the general direction of the magnetic pole, but it may vary in certain geographical localities by many degrees. Consequently, the exact amount of variation at thousands of selected locations in the United States has been carefully determined. The amount and the direction of variation, which change slightly from time to time, are shown on most aeronautical charts as broken magenta lines, called isogonic lines, which connect points of equal magnetic variation. An isogonic chart is shown here. Minor bends and turns in the isogonic and agonic lines are caused by unusual geological conditions affecting magnetic forces in these areas.
This tutorial focused on airport operations, both in the air and on the surface. For specific information about an unfamiliar airport, consult the AFD and NOTAMs before flying. For further information regarding procedures discussed in this chapter, refer to 14 CFR Part 91 and the AIM. By adhering to established procedures, both airport operations and safety are enhanced. We hope you learned a lot. Please help us spread the word about Pilot Training System, and we look forward to further servicing your flight training needs.